The one thing that I really, really wish that I knew at the beginning of my fitness journey because I feel like it really would have helped me dodge so many struggles that I went through is that... Hello you guys, welcome back to another video. It is so freaking dreary out today, like I feel like it's so dark even in my room. I guess I couldn't turn a light on, but it's just so dark outside because it's just like overcast and gray. It's been like super stormy and raining here, which is like not very common for Utah. And if you can hear all of that kind of construction in the background, my neighbors are cutting down quite a few trees and it's really freaking loud and there's just like a bunch of saws. It's this whole situation. But for this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys things that I wish that I knew at the beginning of my freaking fitness journey because I feel like there were so many ups and downs in my fitness journey and I feel like for me, so many of my life lessons were in my fitness journey and I feel like all of the trials and tribulations and up and up and downs that I went through. I believe that I went through them for a reason in order to like then help you guys and help other people go through their fitness journeys just more efficiently and help you guys not make the same mistakes that I did and just share with you guys all the wisdom and knowledge and just insights that I learned in my journey that helped me finally get to where I want to be. So I hope to offer some good insights for you guys throughout this video and hopefully you guys can dodge some of the same little mistakes that I made and you can learn them throughout this video rather than you having to go through them and putting the time in to learn the lesson. So I've had this my hairstyle in for like two days now but I honestly really freaking love it. They're like these little teeny braids and usually I just leave it like this and then put my hair down but my hair was dirty so now I like put it in a little claw clip and like I said I'm going on hour 48 with my hair like this but it's so freaking cute and it's a way to get my hair on my face and I freaking love it also I don't know what's going on but I'm so unbelievably grateful I already got some stuff on the box but Lancome sent me some makeup and I just like don't know what to do with myself I'm not a huge makeup gal but like I I can't believe this I'm so grateful and they sent like a little face serum a youth serum some of their mascaras some like a felt eyeliner which was really cool and sometimes I do like to do a little wing and I tried this and I absolutely love it like it was so much easier to do a wing with it so I can't believe this and I'm so grateful and of course like thank you to you guys because without you guys this would literally be not possible for freaking Lancome to send me PR so thank you to you guys and thank you so much to Lancome. I did try both of these mascaras. This is like a primer and then this is the mascara itself. I honestly didn't love this. I feel like it didn't give my, it didn't make my eyelashes look very full. But like I said, I really did like this eyeliner. I'm like trying to figure out where the best spot in the house is that's the quietest right now from this freaking construction and I think it's gonna be my dad's room. The one thing that I really, really wish that I knew at the beginning of my fitness journey because I feel like it really would have helped me dodge so many struggles that I went through is that less is more. Of course, it depends on where you are in your fitness journey. Like sometimes, yes, you need to buckle down, really be disciplined and like really go full force towards your goals. But for me, it totally got to a point where I just was overdoing it. I was overtraining. I was in the gym, like killing myself six days a week. I never had any sort of like active recovery day. I never did any sort of deload weeks or anything like that. Like it was always lifting as heavy as I could six days a week. And I just was running my body into the ground. And I was in college at the time. So I was studying like crazy. Like I was constantly so busy busy from like 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. like I was always running around doing something and it just was so much on my body and I felt like that was the only way to achieve my goals and a part of me is happy that I went through that because I do think it takes a bout of like really grinding at your goals to really make a good chunk of progress but in terms of like sustainability and basically being able to pinpoint where I was going wrong you could say back then it was that I never ever let off the break like yes there should totally be points in your finish journey if you have really clear strict big goals Goals, you're gonna need to go full force on them but there's also times where you need to pump the brakes a little bit to give your body and your mind you know a rest and a reset so that you can continue foraging forward and so for me I always thought the more that I trained the more strict I was on my nutrition like just the more 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 that I did the better off I would be the closer and faster I'd be to hitting my goals but the thing is, is like especially when it comes to weight training you can't rush the process and that's why I love building a fit physique and just becoming fit because you can't buy it you can't cut corners you can't rush the process like you simply just have to put the time in there's just a balance between working hard but also being patient and for me when I kept going full force and I just 
just kept doing more and more and more like that's when I started to stress my hormones out my hair would fall out like I just had so many biofeedback mechanisms that were telling me that my body was too overly stressed and I was doing too much and if only I had recognized that I would have understood like oh maybe I need to pull back and that's my answer less is more for me in this phase so I think that's definitely tip number one something that I wish I knew at the beginning of my fitness journey is that less is more I'm always like so unmotivated on days like this where it's just like so gray and cloudy but it's leg day so we have to rally okay also a really exciting package from abel came in the mail which you guys know i'm a freaking athlete stan and i must say these are really cute i like them so they sent over three different sets and i already wore two of these that's why it's kind of a little bit chaotic but they sent over this really pretty scarf like i love this ruby red color it's like i love wearing red i just feel like a badass in it reflex seamless line super cute i love the pipeline detailing the ribbing and like this double layer i think is so sick these are the shorts that come with it again this pipeline i think is so freaking cute and i love the ribbing detailing the back i wish there was a little something something here to separate the cheeks you know how i feel about that but it's actually more flattering than i was expecting so like hurrah we love that this i already wore for leg day the other day this is from their um empower range and i freaking love it because there's a butt scrunch and contouring in your glutes and this like makes your butt cheeks look so freaking plump i i just trust me on it and then they have a little matching sports bra that's also seamless and this like surprisingly is very flattering on the girls i must say and then i basically got the same it's like the same range but in a different color so it's still the empower collection so it has like a little butt scrunch here and then the contouring detailing as well makes the butt just look so freaking cute and i love these little crop tops so i also got this to match it for a little upper body set i'm forever gonna be an outfleet stan like nothing is gonna be able to top my love for outfleet but i do really love these pieces and i think they're super freaking cute and i love the combination of the contour plus the booty scrunch it's revolutionary so thank you so much table for sending these pieces over i've been having so much fun like trying them out and wearing them i think they're super cute but what are we gonna wear for leg day today is the bigger question at hand. I feel like I need some caffeine or something. I really wish that I wasn't this heavily impacted by the weather because it's not sustainable. You know what I mean? I'm a victim to my environment as well, but I just, ugh, like, ugh. like I don't even know if I can wear shorts. It's kinda cold. Maybe I can though. Mm. I wonder what we need to do. We actually need to eat something. Then I'll feel better. Maybe I'll wear this little concoction. This little outfleet. This cute yellow dandelion little top with some booty shorts. Perhaps. Perhaps. Except I don't feel like getting changed yet. Let's go eat something and then we're going to reconvene. <laughs> but my next thing that I really wish that I knew sooner is that blasting fat, like the whole concept of doing hit cardio to blast fat, melt off your fat, all that is just basically a hoax. And I also just feel like it does more harm than good and like puts this specific, it just creates this vibe of the energy and the strategy that needs to be backed behind trying to drop body fat that's just like not the most efficient way to, efficient way oh why can i speak efficient way to do so i when i first started finished journey i was always very skinny i was more so on like the leaner end like the leaner athletic look and so when i first started my only focus was really on gaining muscle and gaining mass so then there was came to be like the first time in my life where i was like wait i actually want to lose body fat and like lose weight which had never been my goal beforehand so i hadn't done nearly as much research as I did with how to properly gain muscle and gain like healthy weight and so then when it did come time to lose body fat I basically turned to what society knows like all of the kind of stereotypes of what it takes to drop body fat which is blasting your fat melt your fat away sweat is just your fat crying like all that sort of stuff and I took it so literally and then for me I went to the extreme right I back to my first point where I always thought more is better and I just went like balls to the wall on hit cardio and I was doing like four to five hit cardio sessions a week which just was literally so overdoing it for my body like my body was so insanely stressed out and I thought that was the way to do it like I thought the harder you train the more cardio you did a more high intensity stuff was the way that you would like blast fat better and more effectively and it just literally had backwards effects for me and it just like the opposite happened I initially lost weight and then I gained it all back because a it wasn't sustainable and two my body was so stressed out and so inflamed and so my hormones were just all out of whack so now I know that if you're really trying to lose body fat the best 
way to do so is to do it in a way that's allowing your body to stay in a low stress state because that is where your body is going to be in the most prosperous state to feel safe enough to drop body fat. When you're doing all this high impact stuff, it's super high stress, right? There's exercise is still good stress on the body, but if it's too much, right? When I was doing four or five hit sessions a week of cardio, trying to go crazy and blast my fat, it was also raising my cortisol levels, which is a fat storing hormone. So even to this day, anytime I'm trying to lean out, I never turn to a copious amounts of cardio or hit cardio. I always turn to low impact cardio or walking. So like daily steps. So that was what really allowed me to see progress. Finally was I incorporated a daily step goal because that allows you to have movement in your day. You're still burning calories, but it's very low stress on the body and it doesn't take a lot of recovery time. So it just wasn't a high stress on my body. So my body was able to relax and therefore feel safe enough to drop body fat because you kind of need to understand holding on to body fat and storing a lot of body fat is kind of your body's like survival mechanism in a way if you think about it kind of evolutionarily like if your body's stressed out and you have a ton of physical demand okay let's say back in the day you're trying to run to freaking kill animals to eat or have to do all this stuff to survive your body's wanting to hold on to that stored energy body fat is just stored energy in case there's not going to be a time where you don't have food you can tap into your fat storages or if you need more energy, you can kind of have that stored energy in your body. So you want to do what you can to create a low stress environment so your body can understand that I don't need to be holding on to this excess weight. I don't need to be in fight or flight mode and be storing this ex these excess calories because I'm not going to need them. It's inefficient for me to be carrying them around all day. That whole concept of blasting fat, all that sort of stuff. Nix it. It ain't it. Wow, this is such an L. My family is here in town and we made flight steak last night and there were some leftovers and I thought I was gonna be able to eat it for lunch but someone already ate it. And I don't really want tuna. And I don't really want to make a smoothie bowl because it's cold. Hey, okay, one what we can try though is this watermelon poppy. I forgot I got this quite a while ago. Mmm. Whoa, that's sweet. Five grams of added sugar. Okay, so there's cane sugar, apple juice, agave, and stevia in here for sweeteners. I can taste it. <laughs> Every time I try to film in the car, I like hope there's a place for me to prop you guys up because I just hate holding it. And I can never find a place. <laughs> Damn though, we're balancing on the steering wheel. The next thing that I wish that I knew is to respect your dang hormones. This is a common theme on my channel because it just literally was cr like it was such a crumbling point of my fitness journey because I had no freaking clue what my hormones were, how they were impacted by my exercise, etc. And I would just go really hard. I would do a lot of hit cardio. I would train really hard. I wouldn't give my body rest and I just did nothing to help to support my hormones. And I never was mindful of like the differences that need to take place when you're training as a woman and I don't as a woman. And I don't mean that in any which way of like trying to put down women. I just mean it more so as an advocate for women in the sense that we are scientifically different. We have a different hormonal makeup and it does play a role with how much stress our body can endure in regards to training and our nutrition. So it's so important as women to be mindful of our hormones and you want to make sure that your hormones are in a prosperous, healthy state. That way that you can actually get the most out of your training protocol and then your body will be able to work with you rather than against you. Because I feel like that was the biggest wall that I 
kind of ran into throughout my fitness journey is I was constantly working against my body because, well, one of the reasons was because I wasn't supporting my hormones to have my body be in like a healthy, prosperous spray space internally to be able to appropriately respond to my protocol and stimulus that I was putting on it with my training and nutrition. Some of my biggest hormonal struggles that I dealt with throughout my fitness journey was number one being high cortisol levels that definitely came from me just overtraining and just stressing my body out not giving my body enough resting period and I didn't do really anything to support my adrenals and then the next thing that I really struggled with was low sex hormones so like my estrogen levels got insanely low that was mainly again for me overtraining but more so for me under eating and then also basically getting down to a pretty low body fat percentage so like now I sit anywhere between like 132 to 135 I haven't weighed myself in a while but at that point I was like 127 which is really light for me like when I'm hitting 130 I'm very lean and so 127 was like very little for me and I was very low body fat but what's interesting is that a healthy amount of body fat is really important for females because estrogen is also produced in our fat cells which I think is so interesting so estrogen if you don't know is one of the two main female sex hormones we have progesterone and estrogen and they're both really important for healthy periods and just functioning optimally as a woman that can also contribute to hair loss feeling groggy feeling tired so many different things if you look it up there's so many different symptoms that come from estrogen deficiency so that was a huge thing that impacted me and so that came back to me making sure that I adjusted my training and nutrition so that my training was proportional my nutrition excuse me was proportional to my training and that I wasn't overtraining. and I also was doing other things in my lifestyle to support my hormones that would have saved me from just feeling shitty and then also just feeling frustrated with not being able to make progress and just constantly feeling like I was battling with my body. All right, I'm going to take you guys through this leg day and then I'm also going to share with you guys a couple more tips that I have to round out this video. But first I started off with some squats. I of course did my little normal mobility routine. If you're interested in what I do for my dynamic warm up, just go look at my week of workouts video. It's a couple of videos back now um, and it will take you through that completely in depth. But I started off after that with some barbell back squats. I don't do these often and these were kind of killer. So I did four sets of six to eight reps. But my next little tip that I have or the next thing that I wish that I knew at the beginning of my fitness journey is the concept of just low impact cardio movement and that it actually is efficient, effective, it's worthy to incorporate into a routine. This kind of goes hand in hand with all the things I've said thus far about how like I really just trained so freaking hard and never gave myself a break. Like I just simply didn't believe in low impact movement, whether that was Pilates, walking, like anything that wasn't, or even yoga. Like I just didn't think it counted as exercise, you know, and I didn't really realize how much it helps just incorporating that movement to help your body de-stress while still being able to get movement in and how much it helps to support your hormones. And I think they're just such a great tool to add in is kind of how I see low impact movement to help balance out your training regimen because it allows you to continue staying active like for your mental health and for your body, but without overly stressing it out. So that was so something that I wish that I knew is that low impact movement is so beneficial and it's so worthy to add in. And if only I had added that in sooner into my routine, because now I have like low impact movement, like two to three days a week. If only I knew to incorporate that into my routine, I know that would have helped so much with my hormonal levels and just having my body be so inflamed all the time. Like that was exactly what I needed was low impact movement, but I just didn't believe in it. So I didn't think to give it the time of day. My next exercise that I did was just some Smith Machine RDLs here. So I did four sets of 12, I believe. And I was standing on a little block just to help me get some more range of motion, but don't feel like you need to do that. And then after that, I went into some glute focused back extensions. I wish I freaking moved to the plate. I did after this, but for this set, I left the plate there and then it was really inhibiting a sister's danger of motion. But for this to make a glute bias, remember to keep your chin tucked and your back rounded and really focus on squeezing your glutes rather than having your low back do the work. I also have my feet tilted out a little bit about 45 degree angles to help also with hitting your glutes and your hamstrings rather than making your low back fire up. But my last little thing that I have is the concept of stress management. I wish I knew how important stress management was. Again, all of these kind of go hand in hand, but I feel like it just speaks on behalf of like a whole facet of health that I was just completely neglecting in the past that completely wreaked havoc on my whole entire fitness journey. And so I just didn't do anything 
mentally or physically to help mitigate stress. Also, dude, these AirPro Max um, or these AirPro, what are they called? The new AirPods. They keep falling out of my ears. And that's exhibit A of real life story of how they always fall out of my ear pretty much after every set of something because my facial expressions literally make the Air, the AirPods wiggle out of my ears. But anyways, I just did nothing physically or mentally to regulate my stress hormones. And like I said previously with high cortisol levels, that's due to being highly stressed out. And that comes from either being mentally stressed out or physically stressed out or both. And so I just did nothing to help that. I didn't go for daily walks and prioritize outside time. I didn't prioritize meditating, journaling, taking control of my thoughts, like being intentional with the thoughts that I think and learning how to calm myself down, regulating my nervous system. Like I just did didn't do anything of that in that regard. And like I was, that was such a time in my life where I was unhappy. I was stressed about things because I didn't like where I was in my life. And I had so many things to do as well because I was in college. And so that time period more than ever was like so important for me to really take care of my mental health and help my body de-stress. I didn't take baths. I didn't do anything to help my body de-stress and like both mentally and physically not doing so made that manifest physically in my body. It made it come out because my body and my mind was just so stressed. And so I was walking with my symptoms literally pretty much every day. So that was such a huge thing. And that's been something that's changed my life is just being more intentional to be more stress-free because stress more than anything is what ages us the most. It's scientifically proven. And so being stress-free the most that you can is the real flex in this world. So mentally and physically please don't forget to do things to mitigate your stress and allow your body to be in a relaxed state. So I finished off with this drop set. This was killer. I did this twice. I started at, I think 250 pounds. I did 10 reps, then go up. Well, I guess drop your weight by two clicks. Then I did 12 reps, dropped the weight by two more clicks. Then I did 15 reps, dropped it by two more clicks. And then I did 20 reps. You guys, my butt cheeks were on freaking fire. I didn't know what to do with myself. I think I started at 250 pounds. And then by the end of those kind of like five sets, I ended at 130 pounds, I believe. And like I said, I repeat did that through twice. Whew. How are you guys? That was actually a surprisingly good workout considering I felt super like not in the mood beforehand and I didn't do any hip thrusts. I don't know why I've been getting sick of hip thrusts. Like the last couple weeks I have not been going hard at them at all or like having any motivation to do them. But anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys got a few insights, a tip or two from this. But if you did enjoy this video and you're up for it, don't forget to give a little like for this video and comment down below if you want to let me know your thoughts on the video. And also if you want to see more videos from me, definitely don't forget to subscribe because we post every single week, every Tuesday and Friday. I've been really freaking consistent the past couple of months and I feel very proud. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope this helped. I love making YouTube videos. I really do. I'm sending you so much love and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.